there, my name is Kelly Dale with Off the Beaded Path, and this is your Must Know Monday for Monday, July the 18th. Today starts the first video in a new series on bead crochet. This series will last six weeks and is going to be pretty intensive. So you're either going to love this or you're going to hate this. So just prepare your, your minds and your hearts for what's fixing to happen. So there's a couple of things that we need to talk about. The first thing that we need to be prepared for bead crochet is our actual tools and stringing materials. So that's what we're going to talk about today. The first thing that you're going to need is a really good crochet hook. For me, in my video, I'm going to be using a crochet hook by Susan Bates, it's the brand, and I'm using what they call a number six crochet hook, which is a 1.60 millimeter. Now, I know some different crochet hook companies have different sizing to their brands, so a 1.60 is the size of this one. Your crochet hook just needs to be big enough to grab a hold of whatever thread you're using. Now, when you're using big crochet, you don't want to use a really big crochet hook because if you do, you're going to leave some huge gaps in your crochet. So you want to use the smallest needle that you can use to go along with your stringing material. Now, I have personally had this uh, crochet hook for six years. My friend Jo Harrison taught me how to do big crochet back in 2010, and she actually put this grip on it for me. It's a um, crochet grip because I have really big hands, and so for me to hold on to a tiny hook doesn't work. I was about to lose my freaking mind. So that's why the grip comes into play because it really gives you something to hold on to and as you crochet. Now, they make grips you can purchase in a craft store. Um, I personally didn't have any grips at the time, so what I did was I have created a, a handout, I guess you would say, to put on our private Facebook group, Kelly Dale, Off the Beaded Path, and it's going to have a link to a couple of places I found that you can make your own custom grip for your crochet hook. So if you're a DIYer out there, that's a really good one for you to kind of look for. So that's the first one. Now you can use <clears throat> a 6, 8, or 10. Like I said, I'm using a Susan Bates brand 1.60 millimeter hook. The next thing you need is a stringing material. There's lots of stringing materials you can use. Fire line, all sorts. The number one used stringing material for bead crochet is um, crochet thread, either in a size eight or a size 10. This one is a size 10, and as you can see, it is a huge roll, like you would never hardly run out of this stuff right here. This is what I'm gonna be using in the video. You can also use an S-line or a C-line cord. This is really great if you're going to be using fire polish beads to do a bracelet with because it's a little bit thicker and it can take a little bit more friction from the beads. So that's another one. And my all-time favorite thread to use when I'm doing bead crochet is a product called Jean Stitch Thread. Um, this one has 200 yards, it's 100% polyester, and this was actually um, made from a company in Rock Hill, South Carolina. So this is my all-time favorite to use. But like I said, there are lots of stringing materials. The main thing you want to remember when choosing a stringing material to do your bead crochet is you want the stringing material to fill up or come close to filling up the size whole bead that you're using. That way, your beads aren't pushed out really far and look funny. So that's another thing that you need. The next thing that you need is an optional tool. Bead crochet requires that you thread on all your beads to start with. A lot of people recommend that you thread the beads straight onto the spool of thread and then wrap the beads around it to hold. Only problem I have with that is I have a two-year-old, almost three-year-old at home, and if he finds this with beads wrapped around it, oh my heavens, you can just forget it. So I don't actually do this method. I use a bobbin method. 
Now, a lot of you recognize these little bobbins from Kumahimo because you like, some people like to use these smaller bobbins to hold their beads for Kumahimo. I'm actually going to be using the bigger size, um, and these are really great. They're like a soft silicone so that you can pop them open. You can thread your, put your thread on here with your beads, and you can close them up. The one thing that I really, really like about using the bobbin is if I'm doing my bead crochet and I have to stop, I can actually wrap my unfinished crochet piece around inside of it with the hook still attached, and I can close it just like this. I can throw this into my purse or my bag that I'm carrying, and when I have to sit in line for something or I might have to wait on Grayson to get out of preschool or something like that, I can sit, pull it out, stitch a couple of rows, and you know, close it and throw it back in my bag. So this travels really well compared to this. So that's a thing to think about. And also on that big crochet um, handout that I've got for free for you, I put how much thread you're gonna need per inch of crocheted, finished crocheted rope. So that way you'll kind of know how much you would actually put on here. The other things that you might consider getting and having is a bead scoop because you're gonna be pouring out quite a few beads to pick up. So a bead scoop is always great. And another thing that's really, really handy is a tulip awl, okay? This is just a really fine tip pointed um, tool that you can poke holes with, um, things like that. I like to use this so that if I drop a stitch or if I mess up and I have to pull it out, I can use this little fine tip tool to get into the inner part of my tube and pull out what I need. Now, if you don't have an awl handy, you can also use a safety pin. Just try and find the thinnest safety pin you can to, um, to do that. The only other thing you're going to need for bead crochet is a big eye needle. And mainly because you're going to need that needle to thread your beads onto your cording or whatever you decide to use. So those are going to be the basic tools that you need for bead crochet. Now next week, I'm going to tell you about the different sizes of beads that you can use. And I'm going to show you how we'll actually load those beads onto our thread and my bobbin. I'm going to be using a bobbin so that you can get started with bead crochet. Now I will go ahead and tell you, I'm not an expert at bead crochet, nor am I claiming to be an expert of bead crochet. This is exactly how I do it, and if you do it different, that's completely great, fine, and wonderful. But don't put in the comment section that, you know, I'm doing a crappy job or something like that, because like I said, I'm not telling you that I'm an expert at this. I'm just telling you how I do it and my method, and maybe you can learn something from it. So, if you go to Facebook and you search Kelly Dale Off the Beaded Path, you can find our closed group. In our closed group, like I've mentioned several times, there's going to be a two-page handout that you can print out in the file section. And this is going to go over what I talked about today, as well as everything that I'm going to talk about over the six-week period. It also has a schedule over the next six weeks of what I'm going to be talking about each week. So that way, you know, if you're watching this video six months to four years from now, you can go back you can find this free handout and you'll actually be able to see which video you need to go back to to learn whatever it is that you need to learn. So guys, thank you so much for watching and be sure and come back next week for the second week of our Big Crochet Must Know Monday series. Have a great week, guys. Bye-bye.